Good morning. It's Wednesday, August 30th, and I'm on my way to Westchester to replace that Burnham Alpine boiler that I had taken a look at. And Peter is going to be meeting me there. He has to pick up the boiler itself at the supply house, and hopefully everything goes smoothly. Okay, so here's the boiler. I already got started and I actually printed up some labels for all the thermostat wiring. Uh, I disconnected my circulator, boiler power, domestic water circulator, the gas line, and I drained the boiler out. Um, but this customer has to replace this Alpine because the house was struck by lightning and it destroyed the electrical components. And this is their breaker panel. So you could see totally melted that lug, just molten aluminum sitting there. And the whole panel is just burnt up. Every single breaker is pretty much tripped. And it blew a hole right through, a really big hole right through the front cover plate. So it's a lot of garbage, some burnt up switches and things like that, burnt up boxes, you can see, pretty crazy, a uh, light fixture that burnt up, and it's a lot, so they had to get new panels over there. Peter's not going to be here for an hour, so I'm just going to get everything disassembled while we, we wait for him, um, and we'll see what happens, but it's a pretty straightforward replacement. Um, I tested the switching relay and it seems to be that all the pumps are working. They were all circulating, so we should be okay on that. Um, and just a matter of disassembling. Okay, so you can see you got the boiler moved over. We're completely disconnected. Uh, I prepped my one inch couplings here. Um, I'm not sure that we're gonna line up exactly on the new unit, uh, cause it does look like it might be a bit different on the new model. But I marked insertion depth on both because you have to do that with Viega in order for them to warranty any fittings. So I've been trying to make a habit of that. But yeah, just waiting on Peter so we could get this one out and get the new one in. And should go smoothly. It went nice and smooth so far. And it started to pour pretty hard and then slowed down, but Peter just got here. So we could get that boiler down there and in position. Alpine 210, so should be all set. Okay, so we ran into a bit of an issue. This new unit is a wall-mounted unit, which had this box on it and this venting assembly. So we had to transfer the old venting assembly and we're gonna have to get it all cleaned up and I have to get a gasket for this. Um, I'm debating trying to take this one out intact or just seeing if I have the Alpine gasket in the van and doing that. But we have to make sure that this stays in place when we slide the exhaust on. It's a real pain to do. Um, so we're probably gonna have to glue it in like the uh, existing one is when you get it. Okay, so if you take a look, you could see I did get that gasket in there. Uh, you can really only see the red peaking there, but the gasket stayed in place. Regardless to be safe, I'm putting silicone on that inside before I fully seat it in. That way uh, we know for a fact that we're gonna be good to go. And then we can clamp it on and slide the machine into place. But while I wait for Peter, who's picking up that silicone, because I didn't have any high temperature, I connected my press fittings up onto where they need to be. Uh, the nipple, the T with the Tridicator relief valve and boiler drain, it comes with all of that new, uh, which is nice. And actually, if you take a look, he had the old original sensor on it, and that disintegrates. So it would have been uh, while it was running spewing carbon monoxide into the basement. And on this one, we have the newer uh, silicone one that holds up to temperature well. So that's nice. Um, as far as the venting, it looks like we're going to be okay because we don't have to replace anything. 
Uh, they, it's mandatory that the first few feet is CPVC for the Burnham Alpines. And we have it there. I was thinking we may have to cut it to be able to get the unit in and out, but it worked out fine. Uh, but regardless, they give you that length of CPVC in a box, which is nice. Um, as well as the wall mounting diagram, which we don't need because we're not wall mounting it. Uh, it would have been nice if this were the floor mount model, but it is what it is. The only difference is that back plate. Um, and yeah, you could see it's, it's identical except for that plate. So once Peter gets here, we should be all set. Okay, so I applied a bead uh, past the gasket so that it doesn't get the silicone on the gasket and push the pipe in and as it pushed the silicone out i just smoothed it around with my finger and we'll have a really really good solid seal now and we're clamped on on both our fresh air and our exhaust so confident in that now uh, i hate working with that gasket because as you could see from this one they had siliconed on it prior because of a, a gasket leak but we're replacing this circulator uh just because it peter careful of the this is the domestic water coming in. But we're replacing the circulator with the one that it came with, so, because it's better to do that. This was hooked up to the boiler wiring. We don't know if it was fried too. Okay, so I'm working on electrical and we're doing the water connections right now with uh, one inch and press copper. So we got that piece in. Um, Let's see, we'll have to shorten this a, t a hair, uh, just a hair, take a hair off. Okay, so all of our wiring is done, our power coming in up top, our boiler circulator and our domestic hot water circulator. Now we can press in these fittings and everything is in there fully. There's no leaks. What's the pressure say, Peter? Fifteen. And hopefully all of our four connections stay solid. So uh, yeah, almost done. Maybe eight. Yeah, it's at five. But hopefully we'll be good and have no leaks. Okay, so Peter is working on drip leg, but right now uh, we're actually ready to turn the power on, so.
that didn't work. They must have turned the breaker off. Watch out, Peter. I'm going to turn the breaker on. Oh, uh, they turned off multiple. I got to ask them which one they, they messed with. Okay, so domestic hot water, pre-ignition. Uh, we may have to wait a little for the gas line to purge, but uh, this should be calling. And it's, we just got light off, so we'll see how everything operates and we'll make sure that uh, we're burning safely. We'll do a full combustion analysis, but we are lit. Our supply is coming up. I can feel it coming up. So we're circulating. Um, it would be overheating too quick if we weren't circulating. And we'll let this run, try to satisfy that tank so we can give them hot water first thing. Then we can test our heating zones. Let's see what it's set to, 120. So we're checking all of our gas connections now for any presence of leaks. It's in high sensitivity, so it would pick up if we had anything and it would be faster. So all of our gas connections here are good. And then another thing that we're doing is confirming the heating zones are getting hot. Um, I wanted to use the top down, but my top down is broken. So she is turning on heating zones um, and we'll see if they work. Uh, we're mainly seeing if the thermostat still works because I know all the circulators are pumping because I bypassed it at the panel when I was here. Okay, so we got one thermostat clicked on. Should be able to see which one it is shortly. This one right here, right at the center. So, we'll just make sure that everything is circulating heat and working properly. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're looking at the boiler model, which is a 210 for natural gas. In low fire, we want CO2 of 7.9 to 9.9 .9 and O2 of 3.5 to 7. Our O2 is at 5.1, so that's good. And we can check our CO2. Which is 9.09. .09. Caught that for a second. Uh, let's see. 9.09. .09, and we could be up to 9.9. .9. So now we'll modulate it. Press the high fire button on the display, Peter. And it's going to go into high fire. And we only have a few seconds to catch that and make sure that it's burning okay. High fire, we're 3.5 to 6.5. 8.2 to 9.9. .9. So we're right there. What's the, what does it say on the percent? And we're at 100%. So we are good to go. And our carbon monoxide particles per million, we have to make sure that that stays under 200. Let it stabilize for a little bit, but it looks like this one's going to be burning perfectly. And we got both of our low and high fire results printed out with the date. And we'll, we keep these attached to the boiler in a little uh, pouch. So we got that. Stickers. The valves are tagged properly. And we're just waiting to make sure that the tank shuts off at temperature and doesn't keep running. I didn't get it on video, but Peter just lifted up this whole thing by himself and threw it into the truck. Flip it. Spin it.
Yeah, here, spin it that way. And now drop it on the pallets. Yeah, you'll be fine. I would have took the straps out before putting everything in so that you could strap everything. But whatever. Okay, so we finished up. They paid, filled out a capital improvement form. Uh, we made sure that absolutely everything is working. And we lowered the water temperature on the domestic tank a little bit because she said it was too hot. The wife and the husband said whatever she wants. So that's what we did. Um, but that's gonna be it for today. We're gonna head back uh, home. And it's nice, it's, uh, it's 1239. It's gonna be a while till we get home because uh, it's like 40 miles, but 40 miles of traffic. So but hopefully you enjoyed watching the video. Like it if you liked it, comment any advice or criticisms or feedback, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.